crews were able to contain a fire threatening businesses in Shasta Lake today. It started just before 2.30 this afternoon near an AT&T cell tower off of Interstate 5 near Pine Grove Avenue. It consumed four acres and was headed up the hill towards the I-5 off-ramp near Larkin Avenue, getting dangerously close to a number of homes and businesses. Crews were able to contain the fire before it reached any structures. One of the main roads leading into Yosemite National Park is reopened after being closed for the past five days because of a raging wildfire. A park spokesman says all evacuation orders in the area were lifted tonight and that Highway 140 will reopen to traffic by 645 tomorrow morning. The fire that has burned more than 5,000 acres in the Stanislaus National Forest is now 50 percent contained. It was sparked when a motorhome caught fire last Thursday. Firefighters made enough progress Last night and today, officials say all of the communities once in harm's way are no longer threatened. Wow, that was a beautiful shot wow. there of Yosemite there in the end. Uh, let's check in with Chris Kuyper now. It's hard to believe, Chris, that we're just a few days away from September. Yeah, we're just closing the summer up here, it looks like. And temperatures have been pretty agreeable so far this month. Pretty agreeable right now as well. We're sitting in the 70s now in most areas of the valley. 60s in the mountains, even some 50s coming in. 55 in Chester, 58 our current temperature in Bernie and looking ahead towards tomorrow, a cooler day on top. Always starts off nice and comfortable in the morning lately, hasn't it? Boy, nice. 70 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Noontime warming into the 80s, but only the middle 80s, not warming up as fast as we had been doing recently. 86 at noon. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll finish it off in the 90s, but only lower and middle 90s, and certainly no triple digits on tap for tomorrow or for the rest of the week. I'll come back in a bit. We'll take a look at even cooler weather in our Wednesday forecast. We'll talk about the triple digit days that we see in the summer or that we haven't seen in the month of August and some pretty impressive numbers to show you. All right, thanks, Chris. We have new details tonight about the standoff in a uh, Chico neighborhood last night. Action News reporter Britt Carlson explains how a domestic dispute quickly escalated. To neighbors, it seemed like the entire Chico Police Department showed up on their street around 7 Sunday night after reports of shots fired at a home on 2nd Avenue. Mr. Brennan had fired a, a handgun in the, uh, in the residence during an argument. Um, she was concerned and she contacted the police. Police say 41-year-old James Brennan's wife and young children ages 1 and 3 were in the same room when two rounds were fired. That triggered a four-hour standoff between dozens of officers and SWAT members and Brennan. Uh, he refused to leave. Uh, we tried to reach him by telephone and through the uh, PA system, but he, uh, he was not interested in speaking with the officers or coming outside. Now, police are not calling this a hostage situation because the gunman did allow his family to leave the premises. And just hours later, he gave himself up and walked out on the front porch on his own. And he just came out with his hands in the air real peaceful and walked out to the gate. And uh, uh, police uh, had him get down on his knees and, and lay down and handcuff him. Neighbors say the Brennans had lived in the home for about a year. They weren't well known on the block, but one neighbor said Mrs. Brennan was a great mother. The same neighbor told Action News that she left the home with her two children Monday morning. I thought the police did a fantastic job. Um, uh, he was a, uh, a married man with two small children, and uh, they, they waited uh, several hours, and it, it ended peacefully. Brennan has no local criminal record, but has appeared in Butte County Court for several civil matters, including child support payments and unpaid collections. For Action News, I'm Britt Carlson. Well, Brennan remains in custody in the Butte County Jail for firing that weapon inside the house. The Glen County District Attorney's Office is taking a stand against domestic violence. In the past week, two men were convicted on domestic violence charges, signifying a renewed emphasis on stopping abuse by District Attorney Bob Maloney. Maloney, who took over just in January, says he's seen more domestic violence cases come across his desk than any other type of crime, with the possible exception of drug cases. It, it happens more than people realize. It, it happens more than I realized until I actually had the opportunity to sit down and see the cases. Maloney says he's working to prioritize all of the cases that come through his office with violent crimes and repeat offenders at the top of the list. He says he's also working to reduce the emphasis on plea bargains, aiming to be sure criminals are held accountable. 
Officials say a Fort Bragg city councilman who was shot and killed in the woods of Mendocino County and stumbled on after having stumbled under a remote marijuana operation. The deputies say Jerry Mello was shot around 10 Saturday morning as he and another man walked through a rugged area of a timber company land about four miles outside of Fort Bragg. Now, the man walking with Mello escaped and called for help on his cell phone. Officials have identified the suspected gunman as Aaron Bassler, whom they describe as a transient who may have been guarding the marijuana garden. He remains at large. The killing strikes close to home for some in the North State. Marijuana grows similar to the one that Mello stumbled upon are found frequently all over Shasta County, as well as other areas of the North State. Now, according to the Shasta County Sheriff's Office, many of these sites are run by Mexican drug cartels, but backyard marijuana grows are becoming their own problem. I'm completely worried about it. I get calls all the time. I get emails. I get letters saying, will you help us? Uh, a lady in Cottonwood. Uh, had her fence torn down several times because people were trying to get to the neighbor's house that were growing marijuana for medicinal reasons. An undercover officer told Action News today that many growers claim to produce marijuana only for medical use, but they are actually selling the drugs illegally. The sheriff's marijuana eradication team works constantly, they say, to eradicate both large-scale and backyard grows. A Shasta County man is facing an attempted murder charge for allegedly shooting another man in Montgomery Creek. Sheriff's deputies responded to Windy Point Road about 9.30 last night for a report of a 25-year-old man who had been shot in his chest. Deputies Deputies say the victim and suspect, 46-year-old Terrence Seed, had been arguing over a medical marijuana grow when Seed reportedly pulled out a handgun and shot the victim. That victim is still in the hospital. Authorities say his injuries are not life-threatening. Seed was arrested after he was pulled over driving away from the scene. Red Bluff police are seeking the public's help in tracking down the two suspects who held up a gas station attendant at gunpoint. It happened around 5.30 Saturday morning at the Valero gas station on Antelope Boulevard. Police released these photos from surveillance video. They're hoping that someone might recognize the suspects. The clerk told police the two men entered the station armed with guns, tied her up, and took cash from the register. Anyone with information should call Red Bluff Police. A Northern California principal is assaulted by a mother on school grounds. We'll tell you what the principal said to the woman's son that upset her. Up next on Action News at 11.